I'll assume what they're interested in, I forgot, is the limit as x goes to infinity. I hope. Otherwise, it isn't much of a problem, I guess. And as such, what we're looking at is, as a form, an expression here, a polynomial, which goes to infinity, and an exponential, which, because its exponent goes to minus infinity, uh, says that the, the expression itself goes to zero as the exponent, well, as x squared gets large. What we're really looking at is a 1 over e to the x squared. As x gets large, e to the x squared gets large as well, so that expression goes to 0. So as an infinity times 0 form, we've seen many times over that we should, let's say, move something to the denominator to make it 0 over 0. This is a nice problem because in the past, I think I personally have said, well, if there is a power of x, maybe move that to the denominator. Uh, that's pretty close to what we have here, but it is, in fact, a polynomial. And to move that to the denominator would have us cook up a reciprocal that's a little bit messy. Sitting right here, as I've written it, is something that you might even more naturally think of as a, a fraction. So perhaps we'll take a look at it in this form. x squared minus 1, move the e to the minus x squared downstairs to get e to the x squared down there. The reason for it, again, is to cook up something that L'Hopital's rule is applicable to. In this case, both the numerator and denominator go to infinity. And, as I just said, the nice thing about moving the exponential down there is because, well, I don't have any quotients to deal with. And L'Hopital's rule, then, might be easily applied. Let's see how it goes. Take the limit as x goes to infinity. And what we have is 2x over derivative of an exponential, this time will be e to the x squared times the derivative of x squared, which would be 2x. Don't forget your chain rule. Derivative of e to the u is e to the u du dx. Well, fortunately, that just kind of matches things off just nicely. You can always cancel things because, you know, the expressions are equal before the limit is taken. Now looking at it, as x gets large, what we have is 1 over e to the x squared that goes to 0. It goes actually to 0 very fast. You have to check it on your calculator. What's this quantity equal to when x is 100? And it's e to the 10,000 in the denominator, which is a gigantic number. So that would be an easy uh, situation where you might plug in a fairly large number and notice that the expression is nearly 0. Let me say as a, a comment, which we may, in fact, use here at some point in your calculus <coughs> career, is that if you take a polynomial of any degree, you know, even uh, an x to the 87 will do, if you take any polynomial of any degree divided by e to the x, that limit will, in fact, go to 0. So x to the 87 divided by e to the x, for example, as x gets large, goes to 0. And this is why people say things grow quickly, and they may say, well, things grow exponentially. Exponential growth is faster than polynomial growth as x gets large. Okay, the other problem dealt with another form, which was a 1 to the infinity type. This is problem 13. Again, x goes to infinity, and what we're looking at is 1 plus 1 over x raised to the 5x power. Okay, that's a classic problem because it, uh, it really bothers one's intuition if you haven't done many of these. It's a 1 to the infinity form, and again, I'll go through my little pattern, say that a lot of people will say 1 to any power is 1. That sounds pretty good. Other people will say, well, look, inside here, I've got something that's actually greater than 1. And if you take something bigger than 1 to ever larger powers, you get infinity. And as it turns out, it really is indeterminate 
you can actually construct just about anything you want here. It could be either one of those, I think. But in particular, I don't think it's either one of those in this particular case. So I guess the question is really, if it's going to be anything, what is it specifically in this one case? Now, that particular form, as we've seen, can be handled quite easily by taking logarithms. We'll let y be the expression that we're dealing with. The log then gets that exponent down so that we can handle it somewhat more efficiently. In fact, <coughs> if x goes to infinity, what we're going to have is an infinity times a 0, just like we did in the previous problem. So let's start out here. Let's let x go to infinity. Log y equals limit as x goes to infinity, 5x log 1 plus 1 over x. And as I just said, what I'm staring at anyway is something first, the 5x going to infinity. And the log, well, if x goes to infinity, the argument for the log goes to 1. Log of 1 is 0. So we're in that particular form. What we have to do is modify that form. We've done one a little bit like this last time. We found that it was most efficient to move the x down. We could move the 5 outside as well, if you wish. And the reason, again, is because they have a, a 0 over 0 form. And we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So let's do that over here. Here's the expression again. In fact, let's take the 5 out. <coughs> We've got a log 1 plus 1 over x. And we have a 1 over x. We've got to be pretty careful here. It's, uh, those are necessarily easy derivatives. And if you're off by a little bit, of course, it really throws the limit way off. <coughs> now, this is log of u. Its derivative should be 1 over u du dx. So let me do that off on the side here. We want to take the derivative with respect to x of log 1 plus 1 over x. Okay, let's see how it goes here. It's 1 over that expression times the derivative <coughs> of that expression. Okay, 1 over u du dx. And the derivative of x to the minus 1 is a minus x to the minus 2. Okay, now if I multiply that stuff together, I'll get a negative 1 over, if I multiply the x squared through, I'll have x squared plus x. I'm simply taking the two fractions and multiplying the denominators and numerators. So there's the expression I should have on top. <coughs> and on the bottom, when we take the derivative, we'll get a minus 1 over x squared. Well, there's a great deal of simplification you could do there. I certainly would suggest that before you try anything else. Uh, let's take reciprocals. Of course, we can cancel the, the negative signs. <coughs> take the reciprocal of 1 over x squared and multiply through. We've got x squared over x squared plus x. You could actually apply L'Hopital's rule a couple of times here. Um, but I think uh, we've done this in the past, and that's simply to divide numerator and denominator by the highest power of x, namely x squared. And it looks like the entire limit then becomes a 5. Don't forget we had this 5 out front. And I forgot to do my traditional um, justification for applying L'Hopital's rule there at that particular stage. Again, you could apply L'Hopital's rule twice here. You'll get a 1, as you might see just by looking at it. Of course, that's not the answer. 5 is not the answer. What we found is the limit of log of y so to finish off the problem, let's do it this way. We've said that, or shown, I should say, log y goes to 5. That implies that y itself must go to e to the 5. And that's why I say these are kind of funny expressions, because look at what we started with. 1 plus 1 over x to the 5x. 
I don't see any logarithms or exponentials there, but nonetheless, what we've shown is that that particular expression goes to e to the 5x. It's kind of a, <coughs> pardon me, not 5x, e to the 5, <coughs> which is kind of a, a funny little number to come up with in that particular situation. Actually, to tell you the truth, it's not that funny. If one were to put in, let's say, uh, a .085 here, just to show you something kind of interesting, uh, as it turns out, you'll get a 5 times .085 as your limit. And that turns out to be another way to look at continuous compounding. This expression right here would be compounding x times a year for five years an 8.5% interest rate. Take my word for it. It's not that hard to see, but I don't have time to tell you about it. For five years, we'll compound x times per year, 8.5%. Then let the number of times per year go to infinity, and you've got continuous compounding for five years. And if you see that, maybe things aren't so surprising, because a few weeks back, we talked about continuous compounding. And in fact, the exponential function was the thing that was the answer. So one more time, 1 to the infinity can be just about anything you like. But if it were a banking problem, as I just said, I hope you all realize that if you put a dollar in after five years, you would hope to get more than a dollar back. On the other hand, you wouldn't expect to get an infinite amount of money back. As it turns out, this is what the banker's going to give you. So when I say 1 to the infinity can be anything, of course, it's what the banker wants. But in this particular case, that's what it should be. OK, those were a couple good problems. Again, they touch on a typical types of uh, indeterminate forms. I just let the, the other word on my mind slip out, and that, that's the section or sections on improper integrals. And they follow right after L'Hopital's rule. The reason is that they tend to use L'Hopital's rule now and then. So let's, let's start to take a look at those. Now most of these problems we're looking at kind of uh, shake up your intuition, as I've tried to, to describe to you. <coughs> 